here's more wrestling news for September 17th, 2021. And your headlines for this afternoon include Big E takes a dig at Roman Reigns, AEW wrestler texts current WWE champion, ex-WWE wrestler has jury trial date for laundry list of charges, Vince McMahon likely to get bored with new NXT 2.0 responsibilities, WWE wrestler to interfere in the championship match at Extreme Rules 2021, major plans leaked. Former presidential and New York City mayoral candidate Andrew Yang seemingly threatens legal fight with WWE. Vince McMahon ordered not to show WWE legend's legs due to scary injury and more. We are starting off today with the new WWE champion Big E who cashed in his money in the bank this week to capture the title. In the days prior to Raw, Big E had said he planned on cashing in, despite previously saying he planned to cash in on the Universal Champion Roman Reigns. Following Big E's title victory, the new champ got an outpouring of love, but the Tribal Chief merely indicated that he had made a smart decision by not cashing in for the Universal title. Speaking to the bump, Big E responded to Reigns' comment, saying, You don't really know what that's in reference to as a thing. The smart decision could have been, he might have been referencing like maybe he decided to go with the chicken instead of the veal at dinner. So, you know, it really could be anything. I think you're jumping to conclusions, because honestly, it's vague. We'll never know what could have happened had Big E cashed in on Roman Reigns rather than Bobby Lashley, but after 12 years signed to WWE, the new WWE Champion is making the most out of his title reign. Becoming WWE Champion, Big E joins the ranks of some of wrestling's biggest stars ever, such as Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and John Cena. In an interview with Bleacher Report, Big E documented the four-hour ride from Boston to Brooklyn, which he spent responding to tweets and texts congratulating him, and two messages shown the most. I got a Ric Flair text a few months ago for Money in the Bank, and he texted me again last night. It's Ric Flair. Getting a Ric Flair text is pretty ridiculous. AJ Lee, who I still talk to fairly regularly and definitely consider her a friend, reached out and said some really beautiful things. Everyone has just been so incredibly nice. Big E's WWE title win was something a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time, and though we don't know how long he'll be champion for, the New Day alum has a ton of support so far. In May, Buff Bagwell was arrested for a slew of charges, including speeding, giving false data to law enforcement, hit and run, and reckless driving. Arrested in Cobb County, Georgia, Bagwell's explanation at the time made it sound like a simple misunderstanding, but he still picked up a laundry list of charges, which got even longer the second time he was arrested in August. In total, the WCW star has 18 charges to his name, and Bagwell will soon have his day in court. It's been confirmed that Bagwell will have a jury trial on November 18th and will appear before Judge Carl W. Bowers on that day. If found guilty, there's no telling what kind of punishment Bagwell will face, and we'll make sure to keep following this story for updates as we approach November 18th. Now, NXT 2.0 was an impressive debut of the rebranded show, which had to go ahead with Vince McMahon in charge. Mere days before the show, Triple H suffered a cardiac event at the worst possible time, and despite the show being a McMahon production, he wasn't in attendance either. Instead, the chairman sent Kevin Dunn, who kept him in the loop about things, and during Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer said how Vince's interest in NXT will be short-lived. Vince did review the script of the show. He was involved in the creative of the show, but not there, and he was the key guy and everything like that. Whether that will be the case going forward, I doubt. I think it's going to be his toy until he gets bored with it, which will probably be pretty quick. Then, who knows what the TV shows will look like. NXT 2.0 is off to an interesting start to say the least, with debuts, weddings, and title changes in its first week alone. But we'll have to see just how long the multicolored brand can keep the boss's attention. Over to Extreme Rules next as Charlotte Flair will defend her Raw Women's title against Alexa Bliss, who's anything but your conventional babyface. Bliss may be the de facto good guy against the Queen, but she's not your typical heroine, and she won't be heading into Extreme Rules alone. According to sources, WWE's plan is for Bliss to work with Shayna Baszler, who will appear at Extreme Rules, costing Charlotte Flair the title. This explains why Baszler and Nia Jax have been so clearly at odds in recent weeks, as the plan is for Baszler and Bliss to work together going forward. Having Baszler on the side of the new Raw Women's Champion would mean she wouldn't be herself challenging for the title in the near future, 
but being near the champion and consistently featured on TV can only do good for Baszler after Extreme Rules. As the owner of the entire WWE, Vince McMahon is clearly a very busy man, and he's got another problem to deal with now. It's no secret that former U.S. presidential candidate Andrew Yang is a big wrestling fan and has promised to improve the lives of superstars who don't receive certain employment benefits as WWE classes them as independent contractors. Despite this status, WWE imposes strict rules on what superstars can and can't do, such as appearing for other companies, and now Yang has once again targeted WWE with a plea to its roster. He tweeted, Had a call with the Department of Labor. If you are a current or former WWE performer who feels like you were misclassified as an independent contractor, contact union attorney Luke Middlebrook and let's get you what Vince owes you. Been a long time coming, but this storyline is real. Last year, Yang claimed he would assist then-candidate Joe Biden's administration should he become president in the November 2020 elections. Yang has previously spoken against WWE's mandate against any third-party deals for their employees, something that actual independent contractors should be allowed to do. In a subsequent tweet, Yang said that the early responses he's received so far have been very positive, as WWE could be preparing for yet another war, this time with someone who has some very powerful friends. For years, Stone Cold Steve Austin was the hottest thing in wrestling, and his black trunks, black boots look remains one of the industry's most iconic looks. At Unforgiven 2001, a then-heel Austin faced Kurt Angle in the Olympian's hometown, and during his Angle Show podcast, Kurt discussed the match and how Vince McMahon didn't like a certain part of the Rattlesnake's look. Even after the surgery from 1997 when Austin broke his neck, when he came back, he was 100% in going hard. What happened with him and the reason why he retired is because his back started to go too. He was really playing with fire because when he got up on the second rope to pose, his legs would twitch really hard. It was noticeable on camera, so Vince McMahon was telling Kevin Dunn, the producer, not to show shots of Austin's lower body, just his upper body, because his back was starting to go too. Angle added that Austin believed he didn't need surgery, but it was injuries like these that led to Stone Cold retiring in 2003. Last competing at WrestleMania 19, Austin is a rare instance in that he's never come out of retirement since, and even if countless fans would love to see one last match, Austin's neck, back, and twitching legs will probably keep him out of the ring for the rest of his life. And we're ending with another megastar of WWE as John Cena failed in his recent attempts to dethrone Universal Champion Roman Reigns. As part of the Summer of Cena, WWE created NFT kits dedicated to Cena, which at $1,000 each were only meant for the most dedicated chain gang members. Appearing at Florida Comic Con, Cena took part in a Q&A session where he admitted that due to the steep price tag, only 37 of these kits were ever sold. Branding the project a catastrophic failure, Cena said he and WWE believed that spending a grand on exclusive merchandise, including a title, autographed picture, autographed canvas, and an exclusive shirt was a fair price, but that wasn't the case. Cena's NFT also included his new t-shirt, which replicates the iconic Super Mario Bros. 3 artwork with John replacing everybody's favorite gaming plumber, and if you really want this shirt and have a spare thousand dollars, then WWE have plenty left in stock. Well guys, that's our news for today, please share your comments below! Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications! And as always, thanks for watching!